In this video, we'll look at various ways to create some basic data summaries for a couple of data sets in the R statistical software system. Basic data summaries include values such as the mean, median, variance, standard deviation, and so on. The first data set we'll consider to look at various data summary measures is a data set that is available within the base R installation. Now this data set is a time series set of data collected in New Haven, Connecticut over the period 1912 to 1971 and stored in the data set NH temp. So what we've got here is annual temperatures and the mean annual temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So if we're interested in getting the mean of the mean annual temperatures across that time period, we make use of a function called mean in R. So what we do here is we start with our function mean and then put in the name of the data object nhtemp which stores the temperatures over that time period. So R provides a very simple summary here which tells us the mean temperature is 51.16 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if we've been interested in say looking at the variability, so the variance of these annual temperatures, we make use of a function var, var, shorthand for variance. Again we specify the name of the data set which we want to create the variance for. Submit that command and we get information about the variance of the annual temperatures. Similarly, if we wanted the standard deviation rather than the variance, we'd use the function SD. Another quantity that is sometimes used instead of the mean is the median. There'll be situations where a few large or small values might unduly affect the mean value, so we'd look at calculating the median to get a better armory metric of the data. So the function median creates and calculates the median value of a set of data, which in this case is very similar to the mean temperature. <clears throat> we might also be interested in quantiles of our data set and the function quantile allows us to calculate these. So our first argument is the name of the data frame with our temperature data, NH temp, and what we can specify is a particular set of quantiles that we're interested in. So if we put in the argument probs equals and then put in a vector of quantiles that we're interested in, we can get R to calculate these quantiles. So we use C to create a vector, so 0.01 for the first percentile, 0.905 for the fifth percentile, 0.95 for the 95th percentile and 0.99 for the 99th percentile. So this gives us a very simple summary and a better idea about the distribution of the data. Last but not least, there's a generic function summary that when it's provided with a data frame or a single vector, it will provide a summary giving various quantities of interest for that data. The second data set that we'll consider is one that is in the ggplot2 library. So first of all, we'll use the function require to make the ggplot2 library available in this session. Now the data frame that we're interested in is called diamonds, and this contains various bits of information about price and various other attributes relating to the diamonds. So if we want to work out, say, the mean value, or the mean price in this case, by the different type of cut, we'll make use of a function tapply as well as the function mean. So tapply, first thing we do is specify a vector corresponding to the values that we want to divide up by a categorical variable, which in this case is price. We then need to specify the categorical variable that we're going to use to break up our list of prices which in this case is the column cut. And then last but not least, we specify what function we're using to apply to each of these subsets. So as we can see here, there are five different cuts and we're provided with the average price across those five different cuts. 
Now we've also got information in the diamonds data set about the colour of the diamond, which is given a letter, as you can see. Here are the first five examples of that data set. So what we can do is if we want to have a summary of the mean price by cut and colour, we change our second argument to be a list, and it lists the two variables in this case that we're interested in using cut and colour to provide a summary in terms of the mean price for each of the combinations of these two variables. So as we can see here, we've got a matrix of the five types of cut and the seven colours, as well as the mean price for these various combinations.